Okay, so um, the next talk is uh, Random Oracle Reducibility, and it's by Paul Becher and uh, Mark Fishlin. I hope I said your name correctly, but you can correct it. And uh, the tech person? I thought you were on your way to me. I'm, I'm stuck here. Oh, I, I see, I see, I got it, got it. Okay, good, okay. They put a person who has no technical skills as the first chair. Okay. Paul? Paul? While you're getting ready, I want to draw your attention to the fact that there's a monitor there with the time. It seemed like Evgeny was missing it, so okay. you see it on the floor? <laughs> yeah? Okay. okay. You were ignoring it. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay, so there you go. Okay, thanks for the introduction. Uh, this work is joint work with Mark Frischling and is, in a nutshell, on relating the random oracles of two cryptographic schemes. But uh, let's start at the beginning. So consider this situation. We have two cryptographic schemes, A and B, and these schemes uh, come with a proof, as they should be, uh, under certain assumptions. So for scheme A, we have some set of assumptions A, and for scheme B, we have a possibly different set of assumptions B. Um, so if we assume furthermore that these uh, schemes are for the same purpose, we uh, may ask ourselves uh, which one of the scheme is better. So for example, one may be more efficient than the other, or the, um, the assumptions of the one scheme might be milder or even a subset of the uh, assumptions of the other scheme. And there are purpose-specific properties such as the um, ciphertext size, for example, if we're talking about an, an encryption scheme. So this is rather easy to assess in the um, standard model if we want to see which one of the schemes is better. Now, if we consider the very same situation, but this time these proofs come in the random oracle model. So scheme A is proven secure under A in the random oracle model, and scheme B is proven secure under B in the random oracle model. It is now much less clear which one of the scheme is better. So the comparison is um, kind of uh, biased by this random oracle dependency. What do we mean by that? Um, for example, we could have the case that, the, that scheme A the assumptions of scheme A are a strict subset of the assumption of scheme B. But um, scheme A might use more of the power of the, that the random oracle gives it. So for example, uh, it might uh, need that the hash function is perfectly one way or collision resistant or has some other properties which we, um, which we don't know or cannot assess. On the other hand, scheme B could be um, use this uh, random oracle to um, could use much less power that we are given by this random oracle. Or in the extreme case, um, the random oracle of scheme A might even be uninstantiable. So what's the solution to this? We could uh, look at how the random oracle is being used by um, isolating all the properties that are being used but this is sometimes uh, not clear how to do this or it can be very tedious. Instead, what we propose here in this work is the standard cryptographer's approach. That is, uh, we want to use a reduction. And we want to be able to make statements such as if scheme A, given uh, access to, to random oracle H is secure, then scheme B is secure using the very same random oracle. So intuitively speaking, we want to say that any hash function that makes scheme A secure also makes scheme B secure. Or, and we want to, and um, from this it follows that if scheme, uh, if, if the random oracle of scheme B is uninstantiable, then the random oracle of scheme A is uninstantiable as well. Um, 
So you might have noticed this function H, uh, this um, article T here, which uh, we would like to view as a uh, transformation function because the random oracles of two schemes are not necessarily compatible in the sense that um, in the one scheme we may want to have uh, bit strings of a certain length and in the other scheme we might work with, uh, some, with group elements. So we um, slot in here a transformation function that uh, guarantees this uh, structural compatibility. So what we get with this notion is um, a relative uh, security notion. That is, we're not saying scheme A is secure, but if scheme A is secure with this hash function, then uh, scheme B will be secure with this hash function uh, as well. So let's look at this in a more formal way. We say that uh, a scheme is, uh, reduces to sc scheme A reduces to scheme B. If for every hash function there exists a transformation such that, and here's the first kind of uh, reducibility we have, um, strictly, if, if A is secure under some set of assumptions, then B is secure uh, using this very same hash function under a possibly different set B. Uh, this is very strong, as we will see. And therefore, so uh, G is, defines a security game. So for the sake of this talk, we can, um, you can think of this as, say, uh, IND CCA uh, security game, for example. So this is the, the very strict notion. The, we also propose a weaker notion, which says if scheme A is secure under A, then scheme B is secure under A and B. So here we allow that we allow that proving this, we can assume that uh, both sets of assumptions hold at the same time. And we also um, have a notion that is in between these two worlds. That is, if A is secure under A, then B is secure under A uh, union B. But B is, could also be secure for some other uh, function, um, assuming only B, but maybe um, assuming some other assumptions for the hash function. So how does this work? Our main example is um, an encryption scheme. And we are looking here at the uh, twin hash algamal encryption scheme uh, due to uh, cash kilts and shoop, which is an extension of uh, some other original hashed algamal encryption scheme. But it comes with, with mylar assumptions, specifically. Um, to prove the twin hashed algorithm encryption scheme secure, it uh, is sufficient to um, assume the, the computational Diffie-Hellman assumption as opposed to the strong computational Diffie-Hellman assumption. And the security then follows if we uh, furthermore assume that we have a symmetric encryption scheme that is END CCA secure. Uh, so this is a, a, an example where we have such a situation where one might be tempted to say that uh, this other scheme is clearly better than the original scheme. And it turns out, our example here is, um, we look at a variant of this twin hashed algorithm scheme, and it turns out that this uh, variant is in fact strongly reducible to the original scheme. Some details. Uh, the proof uh, is be done in two steps. So first, we show that we have a weak reducibility from the twin scheme to the original scheme. And then we prove that the twin scheme itself, on its own, is secure in the random Markle model, by which we conclude that um, the, we also have a strong reducibility. So I won't go in the, into the full details of these two schemes, but um, I would like to draw your attention to uh, the use of the random oracle, which is um, being used to derive a symmetric key here from two group elements, uh, randomness and the public key to the Y, to the randomness. And in the twin hashed algorithm scheme, we have three group elements. Um, we then use only half of this key to encrypt the actual message. So, um, here it is clear that we cannot use directly this hash function 
because we have here two, uh, three group elements as opposed to two group elements. So this is where we need uh, some kind of uh, transformation function. And it turns out that this transformation function, which uh, takes triples of group elements and uh, applies the um, hash function, the oracle here, twice and concatenates, is indeed a good transformation function for this. So let's have a look at the proof. Um, so we assume we have an, an adversary against the twin Diffie-Hellman scheme, uh, the twin hashed Algamal scheme. And uh, this adversary is going to ask uh, hash queries, random oracle queries. And this will be triples. So we are going to construct an adversary A that attacks the original scheme. And this adversary has to answer these queries. And it does this by simply uh, implementing the transformation function. So that is for, for a given triple ABC. It will ask two queries to its own uh, hash oracle, AB and AC, and simply concatenate the results, just like this transformation function. Uh, A will also have to handle uh, decryption queries. We have one public key from the original scheme. The other public key, which is used in the twin hashed Algamal scheme, um, this one we simulate ourselves, so we have uh, the private key, x1. We give the two public key parts to adversary b, and b will ask uh, some kind of decryption queries, which are these. Since we simulate the one half of the key by ourselves, which is this part, we can check if this is indeed um, um, this is indeed uh, a properly proper um, cipher text, and uh, we will do this by reusing the randomness that we obtain here and um, taking this to the um, to our private key. So if this is uh, equal, we'll go on and ask our uh, own decryption oracle about this randomness and the cipher text, and simply return the message. Uh, we return bot if this, one, this is not equal here, because then we can be sure that the cipher text is not properly um, calculated. The challenge query is um, answered analogously. So we're given two messages, M1, M0. We forward these to our own encryption oracle get back a uh, ciphertext Y, which is the randomness, and C. We use, again, this randomness to calculate our part of the key and simply feed this back to the adversary B. Finally, the um, attacker A outputs whatever B outputs. And it turns out that this simulation is perfect, so adversary A is successful whenever adversary B is successful. And by that, we get that uh, we have a weak reducibility from the twin hashed Algamal scheme to, um, to our variant of this scheme to the original scheme. The next step of the proof would be to show that this variant is also, um, also secure on its own, which uh, is a bit more technical, so we'll have to look at the paper for that. And by these two um, results, we then conclude that we also have a strong reducibility. Um, we have some more uh, applications of this notion. Specifically, we have that um, probabilis a variant of probabilistic RSA FDH signatures is uh, reducible to GQ signatures. Uh, we have also that pro probabilistic RSA FDH signatures are reducible to PSS signatures. And finally, that Schnorr signatures reduce to BLS signatures. Um, these reductions are all strict. And since this uh, notion allows us to, to argue about uninstantiability, um, yeah, this is very interesting for, for, for these schemes. OK. So I saved some time. I would like to uh, thank for the sponsors for the stipends. And I would like to thank you for your Attention. Thanks.
We do have time for a question. Okay, so um, thank you again. And